Chapter 16 um, What Happened in the Walking Land? The Rocking Land was really most annoying. No sooner did the children stand up very carefully and try to walk a few steps than the earth beneath them either fell away or tipped up or slanted sideways in a very alarming manner. Then down they all went, rolling over and over. The saucepan man made a tremendous noise and almost cried when he saw how battered his saucepans and kettles were getting. Moonface! yelled Joe. How can we get out of here? Don't you know? We can only get out of here by going down the ladder that leads to the faraway tree, shouted back Moonface, who was busy rolling down a little hill that had suddenly appeared. Look for it all the time or we'll never get away from here. As soon as the rocking land leaves the place where the faraway tree is, we've no way of escape. That gave the others a shock. The thought of living in a land of bumps and jerks and jolts was not at all pleasant. They all began to look about for the hole through which they had come into the rocking land. Soon the earth began to do something rather different. It heaved up and down very quickly as if it were breathing fast. When it heaved up it threw the children and the others into the air. When it breathed downwards they rolled into the holes and stayed there. It was all dreadfully uncomfortable. I'm getting awfully bruised, shouted Bessie. Oh my goodness sake, let's find a place on this land where it isn't so fiddly. I think we might be on the worst bit. As soon as the earth stopped heaving about, they all ran hard to where the wood grew. And there, just inside the wood, they saw a shop. It was such a surprising thing to see in the rocking land that they all stopped and stared. What does it sell? said Joe. We don't feel well said the saucepan man, quite deaf for a time. Oh, I don't either. I feel as if I've been on a ship in a very rough sea. I said, what does the shop sell? said Joe. No, I, I don't hear a bell, said the saucepan man, looking round as if he expected to see an enormous bell somewhere. Joe gave it up. He looked hard at the shop. It was just a wide stall, with a tiny house behind it. No one seemed to be there, but smoke rose from the chimney. So someone must live there, Joe thought. Come on, he said to the others. Take hold of hand so that we can keep together. We'll go and see this funny shop and see if we can get help. They walked up to it. The stall was piled high with cushions of all colours, each one with a rope tied to it. How funny, said Bessie in astonishment. Cushions with ropes. Now who in the world will want to buy cushions here? Well, I would for one, said Moonface at once. My goodness, if I had a fine fat cushion tied to the front of me and another at the back, I wouldn't mind being bumped about nearly so much. Oh, of course, that's what the cushions and ropes are for, said Bessie joyfully. Let's buy some, then we shan't get bruised anymore. Just then, a sharp-nosed little woman with cushions tied all around her came out of the tiny house and looked at the children. She even had a small cushion tied on her head, and she did look funny. <laughs> Fanny giggled. She was a dreadful giggler. The woman looked cross and glared at Fanny. Do you want to buy my cushions? She asked. Oh yes, please, said Moonface, and he took out his purse. How much are they? Five silver pieces of money each, said the woman, her little green eyes shining as she saw Moonface's purse. Moonface looked at her in dismay. Oh, that's much too high a price, he said. I've only got a silver piece. Have you got any money, saucepan man? No, I don't sell honey, said the saucepan man. Money, money, money shouted Moonface, showing the saucepan man his purse. Oh, money, he said, taking out an enormous purse from one of his kettles. Oh, yes, I've got plenty. But the great big purse was empty. The saucepan man stared at it in dismay. Oh, my money must have fallen out when I rolled about, he said. There's nothing left. The children had no money at all. 
The sharp-nosed little woman shook her head when Moonface begged her to lend them cushions in return for a silver piece. I don't lend anything, she said and went back to her house, banging the door loudly. Oh, it's too bad, said Moonface, taking hold of Joe's hand and walking off gloomily. Mean old thing. Oh, look, there are some more people all wearing cushions. Sure enough, they met plenty of strange-looking folk, well padded with cushions of all colours, sizes and shapes, walking carefully about the paths. One man wore a big eider down all round him, which Bessie thought was a fine idea. The walking man is quite peaceful for a change, she said to Fanny. But she spoke too soon, for even as she said these words, the earth began to heave up. First one way, and then another. Over went the children and everybody else and rolled here and there and up and down as the land poked up at first in one place and then in another. Oh. Oh. Groaned the children. Wish I had a few cushions, cried Moonface, who had rolled up on his big nose and bent it sideways. Went the saucepan man, rolling on his kettles and pans very noisily. Oh, look! Suddenly shrieked Bessie, in delight, and pointed back towards the little wood where the shop was. The earth there had risen steeply upwards, and all the cushions were rolling down towards the children. Grab them! shouted Joe, so they all caught the cushions and began to tie them firmly around them. My goodness, it did make a difference when they rolled about. It serves that mean old woman right, said the saucepan man, as he tried his hardest to put cushions around himself and his saucepans. Suddenly, one of the people of the rocking land gave a frightful shout and clutched hold of a nearby tree. A strange wind blew with a low musical sound. Now what's going to happen? cried Moonface. Get hold of a tree, get hold of a tree, shouted the people round about. When the wind makes that sound, it means the whole land is going to tip up sideways and try to roll everyone off. Your only hope is to catch hold of a tree. Sure enough, the land was slowly tipping up, not in bits and pieces as it had done before, but the whole of it. It was very extraordinary. Moonface was frightened. He tried to get to a tree and he shouted to the others, Catch hold of the tree! Hurry up! But no one of them could, for they had left the wood behind them and were in a field. Slowly and surely the land tipped sideways and the children and Moonface and the old saucepan man began to roll downhill on their cushions. They were not bruised, but they were very much frightened. What would happen to them if they rolled right off the land? Down they went and down nearer and nearer to the edge of the rocking land, and then, quite suddenly, Moonface disappeared. One moment he was there, and the next he was gone. It was most peculiar. But in half a minute they heard his voice, lifted up in the greatest excitement. I say, I say, everyone! I've fallen down the hole to the ladder that leads to the faraway tree. Oh, quite by accident. I'll throw my cushions up through the hole so you know where it is. Roll to it if you can. Make haste. Then the children and the saucepan man saw two cushions appear and they knew where the hole was. They did their best to roll to it and one by one they got nearer and nearer. Bessie rolled right down it. Plop! And caught hold of the ladder as she fell. Joe rolled down next, missed the ladder and landed with a bump on the top branch of the faraway tree. The saucepan man rolled to it next and he got stuck in the hole for he was now so fat with cushions as well as kettles and saucepans that he could hardly get through. Oh quick, quick, quick! shouted Joe. Get in saucepan man, get in! Oh poor Fanny will roll right past the hole if you don't make haste. The saucepan man saw Fanny rolling past. Oh poor Fanny, once she rolled past the hole she couldn't possibly roll back again for it would be all uphill. Quick as lightning, the saucepan man reached out his hand and caught hold of one of the ropes that tied Fanny's cushion to her back, and she stopped with a jerk. One of the saucepan man's kettles gave way and he fell through the hole to the ladder, making a tremendous noise. Moonface caught him and then the saucepan man gave a tug at Fanny's rope and she came down the hole too, landing softly on the top branch of the fireway tree, for she was well padded with her cushions. Well, thank goodness you found the hole, Moonface, said everyone, still looking rather scared. 
what an adventure.